Can you let me know if you can hear me, please? Somebody? I don't know why I always do that. Like, nobody's going to hear me, but... Um, what's up, Matt? Can you, can you guys hear me? All right, cool. So, um... Let's open up with, with a prayer. Just take a deep breath. So Father God, you can have it all. Um, help remove me from pride and ego and outside things that make no difference. Help me personally to stop focusing on like getting a haircut or what I look like for people I'll focus more on like uh, what I can do for you and your creation and how beautiful you are. Um, keep me in remembrance that um, what I do is by your power, not my own. Uh, just let me let go of all of me and get lost in you. Keep my mouth closed and open yours up. Amen. <clears throat> So uh, um, I was. <laughs> we we we've been going we've been going through it, man. We've been going through some some really uh, intense and beautiful stuff. And uh, last week we were told to do. Did anybody do it? Anybody do the uh, principal, agent, director, actor, and stuff like that? That'd be cool if you did. And um, I'm happy to hear about your experiences. Uh, you, you can inbox me. On that, I'm, I'm always anxious to hear that stuff. And uh, we also talked about rewriting my third step prayer. And, and like after we talked about one and how one leads me to two, um, and and like how I see like I'm I'm done. I'm I'm I don't, I'm broken, you know. And all the people in the book are like, there's nothing left, you know. They have completely given up, hidden in deserted barns. You got people, you know. We we talked about all that stuff, and then we moved into two. Um, and, and we're just like willing to believe because obviously if no human power and I believe, you know, that no human power, um, has a, a, a solution for me, then, um, I'm at least willing, you know, to move into three and just say, yo, man, like I, you know, three is like a, a big step. Like I'm, I want to give you my life, you know, and I don't want to, I don't want to live for me anymore because my life run on self will as we've been describing sucks. You know, um, and we must be rid of selfishness. We must or it kills us. God makes that possible. And there's no way of entirely getting rid of self without his aid, you know. Um, so I need I need to get rid of self, man. And I don't want to. I don't want to do stuff for me and try to get um, some type of credit or or uh, um, clout or, or reputation or things like that like I just I have I gotta let go of all that stuff you know and that was a difficult thing for me was coming in and, and like uh because I, I had this like music thing going on and like I was a a big time dude uh and around my way and like I spent my life establishing this false facade and fake reputation of that I'm a gangster, you know, and, and trying to do all this uh, nut stuff, which absolutely led up and added up to equivalent to anything. It didn't equivalent to anything. And um, like, I, I don't know why that was so tough for me to let go, you know, um, but I'm happy. I'm just, man, I'm so happy that I let go, you know, um, and I had, I had to have his aid, you know, and I was just willing and, and he did the rest. And we talked about step three, and, and uh, we were at step three, and we're on we're on page sixty three, and uh, we're in the middle of the page where it says we are now at step three, and we talked about the prayer and, and how I rewrote my prayer. My prayer is uh, giving myself to God is is uh, God, please direct my thinking and my actions in the direction that you want me to go, and may that direction be a light for others to find you. Thank you for saving my life and awakening my spirit. I'll go wherever you'll have me go and I'll do whatever you'll have me do. Just keep me in remembrance that everything I do and say is by your power and not my own. Amen. And that's that's my third step prayer. You know, and hopefully you have your third step prayer. You can use this prayer, um, whatever. But when I'm going to step three, I'm, I'm, I'm ready. 
you know, I, I have to make this decision. It's like not something like, I don't, you know, I don't know. Like, I still want to live over here. There is no straddling the fence. And when you're beaten, broken, understand there's no human power and you're willing to like let God have it and like uh, recreate your life, you know, um, because that you, you have already concluded that that is the only way, then I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready for this. I'm ready to let it go. So we say our, our, our third step prayer and we thought well, and it says at the bottom of that paragraph, and it's, we'll, we'll say the prayer, many of us have said to our maker as we understood him, and, and we'll get all out, we don't need to be in no special, we can do this prayer anywhere with, with a sponsee or whatever, or when they rewrite their third step prayer with me, um, where we usually meet at my house, um, and we'll, we'll get on our knees and we'll say this prayer, and he'll say his prayer, and I'll say my prayer, and we'll do it together holding hands or whatever because it's uncomfortable, and that's the first part. It's like I just want to break out of the uncomfortability, you know? I want to break, I, I know it's uncomfortable, but I know that I'm going to have to do some uncomfortable things in order to change. So we are now at step three. Many of us said to our Maker as we understood him, God, I offer myself to thee. To build with me and to do with me as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties. That victory over them may bear witness to those I would help by thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do your will always. And then it says, we thought well before taking this step. Making sure we were ready. That we could at last abandon ourselves utterly utterly to him we thought well before taking that step and um we're on page 63 if you're just coming in um and and we're doing right after the third step prayer i abandoned myself utterly to him my life ain't mine no more man you know and and i told you about my third step experience um whatever day that was saturday what's the two? yeah saturday so we talked about like what you know the, the crystal thing and, and like how I was just like, yo, man, I'll, I'll go anywhere you want me to go. Just take her. I'll do whatever you want. And I really, I, I mean that. And I, you know, I still mean that. We found it very desirable to take this spiritual step with an understanding person. Um, we didn't have sponsors back there. Back then, it wasn't a name. You know, it wasn't like, hey, that's my sponsor. Maybe it was called spiritual advisors or whatever, such as our wife, best friend or spiritual advisor. But it is better to meet with God alone than one uh, with one who might misunderstand. So I'm not going to uh, take this step and, and like dedicate my life to God with someone who's like, God, what are you talking about? Who's not like awake and it's, it's desirable pretty much is, is what I'm hearing um, is to make this step with someone who's awake spiritually. But it's better to, better to meet with God uh, alone than one with, who, with one who might misunderstand. The wording was, of course, quite optional, which is why in, in uh, my family we rewrite and I have my guys rewrite the third step prayer, you know, in their own language. Um, it's quite optional as long as, we ex as long as we express the idea of voicing it without reservation. <laughs> this is important language. You know what I mean? This was only a beginning. That's it. It's just a beginning. Though if honestly and humbly made an effect, sometimes a very great one was felt at once. And it, it was so with me. Um, I'm not going to do it. So voicing it without it, it was only a beginning um, well, there I'll do it. So some people, some people say, and, and it's true. It's like, okay, so you're willing to give your life to, to to God or that power, right? And they're like, yeah. And it was like, okay, cool, right? Um, the, that's the great news. That's un unbelievable news. But the bad news is that you're blocked off from that power, you know. Um, so we got to continue and do some inventory. So let's move. Next, this is so cool. Next. We launched, and I underline launched because it's like we're not walking, uh, we're not uh, running, um, we're, we're not like um, taking our time. Next, we launch rocket ship is what I think about launch Ooh, into space. Um, next, we launched out on a course of vigorous 
action, which is uh, active force or vital energy. We, we launched out on a course of vigorous action. So it's kind of like, okay, when we get to this point, if I have done a thorough one, which got me to two, I've done a thorough two, which it, it, on a, internally, a thorough two, which got me to three. And honest to God, I'm ready, man, and I'm willing to let go to get to four, right? And I did an honest three to get to four. I'm ready for four. I'm ready to do inventory because I'm listening and, and like the third tradition, uh, n we're not just talking about the desire to stop. We're talking about uh, the, the honest desire to stop, which we had for a long time. And, and of course, the surrender to it. I surrender that this is the way I'm going to try it. I see this guy's awake. We got evidence and demonstrations in our life around us of people who've done this work that are alive, awake. Um, people who we thought were gone. Um, I, I can't even tell you some people said I thought you was dead. <laughs> Next, we launched out on a course of vigorous action. I'm ready to take action. The first step of which is a personal house cleaning. This is the first step, man. Well, not the first step, but this is number number one. I got I got to take uh, uh, some inventory, which many of us had never attempted. Though our decision was a vital and crucial step, our third step decision was a vital and crucial step, but it could have been, it could have had a little permanent effect unless, and here we go again, I underline this, at once, unless at once, followed by strenuous effort to face and to be rid of the things in ourselves which has been blocking us, and I underline and highlight which have been blocking us. Blocking us from who? That have been blocking us all from God. And we know why it's important to go right into it, right? Not take our time. And you go in different places and people are like, oh man, you know, take your time. And I remember someone would have told me that. I, and I remember my sponsor and I actually told him, listen, if you're going to tell me to read something for 30 days, I'm going to be dead, bro. I need a solution. I was ready, man. I was ready. And like, you know, after a time, and I can do a, a one, two, and three, like we talked about Jim too, and how Jim, like, he made a beginning, right? He did one, two, and three. His family was reassembled. He starts working for a concern he once owned. And then just like that, you know, he failed to perfect and enlarge on his spiritual life. And he got drunk, you know, several times in rapid succession is what the book says. And that's my story. I can do a one, two, and three, and then all of a sudden I'm like, okay, cool, and I feel good, and I have an effect. And then I'm like, I'm cool right here. And then if I wait, I'm just, I spend time, and the more time I spend on it, the more I'll, I, I'm starting to think that I got power again. That's just my, my own personal experience. I'll say this, too, about the fourth step. So the journey that we're about to embark on is, is, is like the store. You come into my store. We talked about that. You do, you do inventory in my store. I have no idea. There's people in my store. People come in my store. I got moldy bread, rotten fruit, and sour milk in my store. I've never been from behind the counter. I've stayed at the counter. I've been trying to sell the same stuff for 20 years. You know? I've never done inventory in my store. And people come in and they, you see moldy bread, rotten fruit, and sour milk in my store. And what do you do? You leave. You leave. There's people outside, out front of my store. What do you do? You tell them, don't you go in there, right? Don't go in there. And then me sitting behind my counter, I'm pissed at you because you're telling people not to come in my store and this is my livelihood. I feed my children through this store. How dare you tell people not to come in my store? Like I'm just trying to make a living, man. And I always think like you got something against me or something like that. And then somebody comes back in the store and says, Matt, come here, man. Have you done inventory in your store? And I'm like, inventory? What is that? And for the first time in my life, they say, come here. And I walk from behind my counter for the first time since I opened the store. And I go through and they say, come here, man. And they show me freaking moldy bread. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. I got moldy bread. No wonder... People leave in here. And you're like, hold on, nah, man, come here. Let me let me show you the fruit section. And we go in the fruit section. I got rotten fruit in the fruit section. And you're like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. 
No wonder people was leaving. Hold on, ain't over yet. Let's go to the refrigerator. And my milk's looking like cottage cheese. And I'm like, I can't believe this. Then all of a sudden, the weight's lifted off me. And I'm like, oh my God, I have to be ready to get rid of those items quickly, promptly, without regret. They got to go. You're not selling that stuff. You can fool yourself. And that's what we've been doing all our lives is fooling ourselves, sitting behind the counter, thinking that doesn't matter. Inventory is not important. Somebody will eventually buy it. And ain't nobody buying your mess. Nobody's buying it. You got to get rid of it and, and replace the product, man. You got to keep it fresh. And that's kind of like what inventory is, man. You know, uh, uh, we're doing some inventory. I, I, have to, I have to do that. You know, it's not going to have any permanent effect unless at once. And I'll, I'm going to say this and I'll, I'll leave it alone after this. Um, my last inventory through, <laughs> let me just say, my, my first two inventories... Um, we're quite an experience. The first one, of course, is filled with stuff, right? And it's important, so I get it all out. We'll, we'll, we'll get all that stuff. And then the second one, I realized, you know, I, I'm like, oh, well, I, you know, I really ain't nothing going on, so I'm just doing it just to do it. And I do inventory, and I, man, a, a lot of stuff came up. And it was important. So through that experience, I learned, like, I stutter step because I already been through the work, right? So I'm like, yeah, man, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll get to it another time. And I, I, I took my time. And I swear to you that when I took my time, everything I took my time with, whatever it was, sex inventory, re uh, resentments, everywhere I paused at <laughs> and took my time at was showing up all through my life. I don't know the science to it. I don't understand it. But that is my experience of what happened. And multiple, hundreds of people, without, millions of people will tell you the same. That stuff just started popping up. So eventually I was like, you know, back to the T in the road. Go on best I can or accept spiritual help. And if I'm accepting spiritual help, I'm getting back to this. So I know now that the next time I go through inventory, I'm going to set a date. <laughs> so <laughs> if you want to learn... <laughs> If you want to learn from my experience, right, set a date. Set a date. Look, I'm going to do it and I'm going to have it done by this time and, uh, and try to honor that if you're good with dates and stuff like that. So let's continue. Our liquor was but a symptom. We're blocking us from God. Page 64, top of the page. Many of us have never attempted a house cleaning, you know. Though our decision was a vital and crucial step, the third step decision, it had been, it would have little or or uh, and have little permanent effect unless at once, followed by strenuous effort to face and to be rid of the things in our lives which had been blocking us off from God. And I just, when I do inventory, like I want people to come in my store. So then I do inventory and the same people that I hated start to come back in my store. But the main person I want to come into the store, man. Main person, man. Like God, come into, come into my store. And we do the same thing with our lives. So there have been, uh, liquor was but a symptom. <laughs> it's just a symptom, man. So we had to get down to causes and conditions. <laughs> I had to figure it out. I got moldy bread, rotten fruit. That stuff ain't working for me. You know? Cause and conditions. I have to figure this stuff out. Therefore, we started upon a personal, I, I underline causes and conditions. And I even put next to there, uh, block, blocking from who? And the decision is God runs the show. That's the decision, the third, third step decision. Therefore, we started upon a personal, uh, let, me, let me go back. Decision I underlined, I wrote that God runs the show. I underlined at once. And I also underlined which had been blocking us. And I got it highlighted and I, I put blocking from who? God. And also underlying causes and conditions. Therefore, we started upon a personal inventory. <laughs> this was step four. Here we go. A business which takes no regular inventory usually goes broke. Honestly, God, truth. And you, you work in, in, in uh, any type of retail or something like that. Taking a commercial inventory is a fact finding. I underline fact on, on each sentence here. A fact-finding and fact-facing process. 
It is an effort, it's just an effort to discover the truth, I underline truth, about the stock and trade. <laughs> One object is to disclose damaged or unsellable goods to get rid of them promptly and without regret. They gotta go. You're not selling that mess. This uh, uh, me acting uh, a certain way, right? When someone act, you know, try, the, Victor always seems to. We'll get into all that. I just I'm gonna leave leave it alone. So about the stock and trade to get rid of them promptly and without regret. If the owner of the business is to be successful, he can't fool himself about his values. I, I suck. Every time somebody says this to me and I take it personally, it might not even be, I don't even, listen, somebody don't even have to say or do anything to me. I can develop, fancy or real, right, as we'll get to, I can develop a story in my head on how you did me dirty and hold on to that forever. It's, and I, don't, I have no evidence. I have no experience with it, but I know somebody's like, uh, I'm looking over. Remember in the beginning in the meetings when we was going to groups and stuff like that? I don't know if that, this is your story, but this is my story. And I would look over and I would see somebody look at me briefly, just in passing, look at me briefly, and then say something to the person next to them. And I'm like, talking about me. He's talking about me right now. To the point where I can even react and say, yo, my man, you got something to say? I'm talking about some nutty stuff, man. So that, that's never worked for me. I have no idea what, what's going on in that dude's head or if he said anything about me. But in my head, I'll say it's true. So if the owner, the owner of the business is to be successful, he cannot fool himself about the values. That is not good. We did exactly the same thing with our lives on the inside. This is where we're doing it. This is the store. This is the store on in here, the internal. We did exactly the same thing with our lives. We took stock honestly. First, we searched out the flaws in our makeup, which caused our failure. We're going to learn all this stuff in inventory. I got to say this, man. I know, I know this thing sounds like, a, and, pe and you, you hear people talk, and you hear people carrying the message, and we go to groups, and we go to meetings, and we forgot how hopeless and desperate we were to begin with, and we sit down, and we think that this is just some mumbo jumbo. I have to explain to you that this saved my life, man. This saved my life. I'm an unsavable, unsalvageable person. I'm not, he's seen, the only reason I'm here is him. And doing this work, I'd be gone. There's nothing more important, if you're like us, there's nothing more important than this. This inventory to find out the truth about the stock and trade about myself. Nothing is more important than that. I don't care what you come up with. Jobs and everything. Listen, and there's nothing more important than developing a, a relationship with God and getting rid of the blockage and the stuff that isn't right that's been causing me harm my whole life. And it doesn't. It's hard to. It's it's hard to 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 understand that because you have no experience with it. I didn't either, and I thought it was the same. I was like, I don't know about this, but I did it. And I was ready to do it. And I just believed because I've seen other people. I've seen the demonstration through other people's lives. My brother being number one. And I said, let's do it. And I did it. What's up, Terrence? He did exactly the same thing with our lives. We took stock honestly. First. First. We searched out the flaws in our makeup which caused our failure. Being convinced. Listen to that. Being convinced, I'm convinced when I get to this point, hopefully, I am convinced that self manifested in various ways was what had defeated us. We consider its common manifestations. Common manifestations, man. I underlined and highlighted all that. And I also circled self. And also wrote page 62, right? 
Remember I told you it, it's going to show us in 62. I'm looking for the commons. It's the number, number one is resentment, man. First. Resentment. And I underline, I highlight that, and, and I actually got like a split between re and sentiment. Sentiment is to feel something, you know, to feel something. Just the word sentiment, F feel something. To a resentment is to re-feel something. I'm re-feeling it. I'm, I'm thinking about this stuff, man. I can be, we're talking about stuff like, I'm, it don't even have to be this, this um, bad, but for me, I can think about something. I can be in my bed by myself, and you'll see my eye. And if you watched me, just in my bed sometimes, I mean, especially before doing inventory, I could be driving in my car. I'm playing with something that had with I think. Let me let me let me catch that. Something that I think somebody did to me, or I think that they started it, or that I'm right, right, the victor. I'm writing this from 25 years ago. And all of a sudden, I'm like this driving in my car. And my eyes, my eyes is scrunched up, right? I'm talking about this stuff comes up even today. I still think about it. I still think about it. That's the stuff we get. We get into all that stuff, small stuff. I remember when my fifth grade, uh, I think, yeah, it was sixth grade. My sixth grade health teacher was a, uh, she was a, um, a substitute teacher for one day. She took health and I, I didn't hear her tell people to, to sit in some other seat or something like that. And she grabbed me out of my chair and ripped my shirt. And I remember it like it was yesterday, man. And then you got my dad. We're talking about stuff. We'll get into all that. So resentment is the number one offender. It destroys more alcoholics than anything else. When you have no experience with that, you don't understand that. It doesn't sound legitimate. It's like, how does resentment destroy me? Trust me. Do this. <laughs> we can get to it. Resentment is the number one offender. It destroys more alcoholics than anything else. From it stem all forms of spiritual disease. You ain't got to be no alcoholic to have a spiritual malady and a spiritual disease with a resentment. Alcohol and drugs is nothing but a symptom. We're getting down the causes and conditions, the truth. I know that to this point, you might have thought that this thing was about drugs and alcohol. You know, um, that's the smallest part of this thing. That's the smallest part of this whole program is that I'm free from drugs and alcohol. Smallest part. The things that I have gained from here are tremendously greater than that. And I know that's a huge thing to say. But I swear, I ain't, I'm not swearing. I promise you that that is the honest to God truth for me. From it stem all forms of spiritual disease. For we have been not only mentally and physically ill. <laughs> we have been spiritually sick. When the spirit... When the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out mentally and physically. Ain't that crazy? I was I've, I've been reading um I've been reading Sermon on the Mount, man, by Emmett Fox. Unbelievable book, you know. Shout out to that. Definitely refer to that. Um, if you're awake, you know. Unbelievable book where it's talking about like I was talking to some of the kids at, at, at uh, that I'm, I'm currently at work that I work with um, about this earlier. You know where like the, when I'm working out on the in, when I'm working the inside and I work this inside and the spiritual malady part of stuff out. When I work this out, this stuff fixes itself. Everything out here is okay. It will fix itself and it's a state of mind. I'm going to do this for the people that that been through the work that that are, are just looking to have another experience as I sponsor people that have been through the work that even got more time with, than me and things like that. And, and because it, it's it's really cool. So this is for for these individuals like myself. Um, I'll say this. 
I get into this thing where in the beginning, right, in the book talks about uh, having this, um, what, which at first was a, a, an occasional um, hunch, right, <laughs> or, or um, inspiration gradually becomes a working part of the mind where like in the beginning, like I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel God and I'm building that communication and it's amazing. And then it just be, starts to become a working part of the mind. And when it does, it gets a little leery. You know, where I'm like, I'm doing all the right stuff, but ego and pride. I was just praying about that before we started, where like I'm worrying about my beard and, and a haircut and like some nonsense. And then I start worrying. I don't even catch. It's so hard to catch because we live life. So it's so hard to catch that I'm starting to do stuff out here instead of in here, you know. But I've got to pay attention. This is what we're doing. We're, we're talking about some 10 step stuff too. So if you're doing some 10 step stuff, this is good stuff for you as well. And, and inventory, if, you, if you're going back to inventory, but I'm just giving you a, a heads up. So I'm reading this book and it's talking about how like when I'm, nothing that I do on the outside does anything for the inside. Doesn't matter what I accomplish, what I gain, who I'm with, nothing does anything for the inside, outside. But when I'm doing work on the inside, it does everything for the outside. That is the honest, this is the truth from my own personal experience and the experience of all our members that have been through the work and woke up. All of us. That's the truth. You know, we woke up. I'm like, not. Nah, I meant if you're working out at the gym, it's not doing nothing for your spirit. You know how many people I lost to the gym? I'm not even kidding you, man. People are like, oh, you know, where are you going? I'm going to the gym. Been on inventory for six months. I'm going to the gym. You got time to go to the gym, you know? And nothing bad about that because I did the same thing. So don't make it feel like I don't want anybody to feel if you do If you do that or you did that, I don't want to make you feel uncomfortable because I did it too, you know? My, my body, my physical health was more important, I thought. I got to work, you know, I got to get big, you know, but it's all ego. It's all ego for me, all pride and ego. Then uh, the, the mentally, if I, or the mental part, if I go to school and I'm working about uh, my education and stuff like that, right? It's not, it's not helping internal spirit. But when I'm feeding the spirit and I'm being conscious of my things and I'm uh, going through resentments and all the stuff in my, it's just, it, it's unbelievable. And it's the truth. When, I, when the spiritual malady is overcome, we straighten out mentally and physically. And dealing with resentment, we set them on paper. Um, you're going to have to underline this. You're going to have to. You, well, hang on. I'm sorry. I shouldn't say that. We listed people, institutions, and principles with whom we were angry. People, institutions, and principles with whom we were angry. This is the list. For, um, I'm, we're going to go through, let me see how much time we got. We're going to go through some, yeah, we're fine. We're going to go through more, but how I would do it is that's, number one, we're making a list, man. That's what we're doing. And this is where the, the we call the bring to mind prayer comes in, you know. Not just through the third step. It came in through the third step. God bring to mind uh, my third step prayer and, and then let the pen hit the paper. Boom, same thing with this, you know. God, please bring to mind every person, place, uh, institution, and, and principle that I am angry uh, with, let down by, um, um, or whatever, you know. And I think, and I let it go. And I do that for about an hour or so. I stop, take a break, whatever, you smoke cigarette, whatever, whatever you do, you know. Take a break, go back to it. God, bring to mind, boom, let it go. And you do that until no more names pop up. It doesn't matter. It, and it's like, I don't, you know, if a name pops up, put it on the paper. Don't even toy with the thought of, well, I mean, I ain't really mad about. If it pops up, God bring to mind. You ask God, let him do his job. Put it on the paper. It ain't going to hurt nothing. It's not going to hurt nothing anyway. So we listed people, institutions, or principles with whom we were angry. We call this a master list. Sorry. This is my uh, this is my most current inventory, which is I think probably like nine months ago or something. So that's it, man. Just a master list, you know. And this is being through the work. You see what came up, you know. 
So this is a uh, just a master list, you know. I write a master list down. That's it. Names of the people. Cool, right? Let's go. We list the people, institutions, or principles with whom we are angry. We asked ourselves why we were angry, right? Because this is what this is what you can do. What am I? What am I? Who am I listing? Well, people that hurt my self-esteem. In most cases, it was found that someone hurt my self-esteem or the principles or whatever. My pocketbook, my ambitions, my personal relationships, including sex. Somebody was talking to a girl that I liked or whatever. We were hurt. Somebody hurt us or they threatened us. Um, and we were sore, burned up. So I underline all that, and I also circle self-esteem, pocketbooks, ambitions, personal relationships, including sex. I underline hurt and threatened because that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for people that did those things to me. Who did that to me? You know, these are the people on your master list. Usually, usually you know, it's people that did stuff like that. They messed with you somehow, you know, <laughs> so you think. Um, and we're, we're going to keep it moving. The next time I meet with a guy, we do something like this. I get the papers and I fold them over in a stack at a time, right? And we'll fold the, the stack over like this. And then, and you know, some people have four column inventory. Some people got five column inventory. And five column inventory is the same thing that we're going to do, but... Only we're leaving now. Um, we're doing a four column inventory, and the fifth column is what I could have did instead. And we're not uh, going into that. That's you. You can. You will get to that. But if you do that, cool. Whatever you know. However, the book talks about a four column inventory, and then sex and fear inventory as well, separately. So we got step one, or excuse me, column one, column two, column three, column four. Right. So we're just going to get into the first two at this moment. Right. So, on our grudge list, we set after, this is after my master list is done. I got my master list. All the people are done. Boom, I'm praying. No more names are coming up. Cool, call me. So, my master list is done. On our grudge list, we set, we set opposite each name and our injury. So, now I got the columns, column one and column two, right? I take the, the first name of my master list, I put it there, right? And then I, I write down uh, my injuries, what they did to me, what they did, right? So, and, and when we're talking about our second column, our, we write each name in our injuries. So I take the first name on my master list, I put it in column one, I write down the injuries, right? All, all of them. And then I, I go to the next person, pull them back off of my... Uh, Master list and go to the next person or anyone not understand what I'm saying if you don't contact me so Go from one to two and two isn't uh, we for me This is how we do it if you if you do something other cool, right? People have experiences with doing the steps different ways. However, I'm doing it like, exactly like the books talking about so we're not talking about I don't need the backstory you know uh, remember my store, right? <laughs> My store. Milk sour. Fruit rotten. Bread moldy. That's it. That's all I need. Mike punched me in the face. John stole my stuff. You know? Um, lied to me. Different things, right? In different situations or whatever, but I'm putting them all down. Mike, he lied to me. You know, it can even be lied to me about certain stuff, right? Um, punched me in my face. Talked to my girlfriend, you know, um, was was calling my, texting my girl, and uh, he, uh, what, what did we do? He, he, uh, he friend requested some girl I like, you know, whatever, man. But th there's no backstory. Well, see, he was my boy, and in like uh, fifth grade, we was cool, and uh, we don't need no backstory. Mike punched me in the face, man. That's it. Put it down there. Put the injuries down on what he did to you. You know, it's not, it's, not that, it's not that big a deal. So on our grudge list, we set our name and our injuries. So that's one, column one, column two. After column two, 
we would do column three, which is on the next page, right? So I'm just, after they were done with column two, they would call me and we would go with the next stage. Or you can do it all at once, it doesn't matter. If I got somebody that's like ready to go and do this thing, then they, they can get more instructions than a person that's like not ready. Oh, I got all my books falling apart, man. So you got column one, column two, now we're going to column three. So remember, I want you to see something that's so cool. So we go like this, right? Um, column one, column two, column, and I did the foldovers, right? You'll see where it comes up. So one, two, and three. Third column. And this is the, the this is column number three right here. Um, third column is is right here. On our grudge list, we sat, sat opposite each name in our injury. So column one, column two. Was it our self-esteem, our security? our ambitions, our personal or sex relations, which had been interfered with. What did they do? And I also wrote pocketbook pride and ego. Someone hurt those things to me. And that's affects my, so you got part one, uh, one, two, and what did it affect? So did it affect my self-esteem? Did it affect my security, my ambitions, my personal or sex relations? Uh, what was interfered with? Uh, did they interfere with something? Did they take my money? Um, pride, whatever. And that's my third column. Simple, you know? And we're not talking about like, oh, yeah. You can answer all of them for everyone. But the truth is, in the situation, I'll give you an example. Without using uh, names, and I know... Uh, a lot of people that know me on this thing, so I gotta be uh, mindful of what example I use. Um, really don't, but you know I don't want to offend or hurt anyone today, ever actually. So um, I have a girl. I had a girlfriend. Let's just say I got a girlfriend, and I'm locked up. I'm locked up for uh, an extensive period of time, multiple years, and um, let's just for instance, right? And I'm locked up for multiple years. And then um, my girlfriend is uh, messing with another person, and I know, right? Um, and I could say that that affected my sex relations. But did it really affect my sex relations? I'm locked up. Like, would it matter? How did that affect my sex relations? You know, you understand what I'm saying? So I'm really looking into what happened. It's not, this isn't like the most important um, <laughs> column, so... You know, just pay attention to it, though, and look at, what, in the situation, what did it really affect? You know, how can, how can something affect, like, sex relations, right? Oh, my sex relations was affected when, like, I got a, 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 and I'm a dirty dog living like that at the time, and I'm messing with another chick on the side anyway, and I don't even have sex over here, but I'm saying it affects my sex relations over here, yet I've been having sex over here and don't even have sex over here anyway. You know what I'm saying? So it didn't affect my sexual relations. Would it would affect, say, I, I find out that over here was messing with uh, another individual, right? And I know the individual. So what was really affected? And I got my side things and stuff like that. I'm just telling you how things were, you know? And I got my side things and stuff like that. And how I, what was really affected and, I, and that she was messing with somebody I knew. So my pride was hurt. Not my sex relations. My pride was hurt. My pride was hurt because somebody might find out that such and such is messing with Matt Matt's girl, right? Because ego-driven, self-centered Matt, right? And that's what was really affected. We understand? Cool. So column one, column two, column three. Does everybody get it? You got one, two, and three really right here on 65, right, right on that last paragraph before we get these. Um, definite examples. So check it out. We got resentful at Mr. Brown. <laughs> check this stuff. Talk about made up stuff in my head. Mr. Brown, the cause, his attention to my wife. Ain't no backstory there. You know, there's no backstory. His attention to my wife. There ain't no fourth column here because it's extensive. The most extensive. Mr. Brown, attention to my wife, told my wife a mistress. Uh, Brown might. Check this out. Brown may get my job at the office. He ain't got a clue. Yet, this is his thing. This is my resentment. Fancy or real, if it's something that you made up and you know it's true or not, if you refill it and it's 
playing with you, put it on the paper. Uh, what did it affect? On the first one, when his attentions to my wife, it affected his sex relations and his self-esteem. Told my wife and my mistress, what did that affect? Sex relations, self-esteem, and fears bracketed next to all of them. Uh, Mr. Brown might get my job at the office. What did that affect? And each individual thing, security, self-esteem. But you ain't got to go crazy on that section. Miss Jones, she's a nut. <laughs> Quick. Why you don't like her? What she do to you? She's a nut, man. Uh, that's why I resent her because she's a nut. My boy Terrence is on right now. It's like it sounds like you, Terrence. She's a nut. That's a, I don't care. I don't, don't even matter. She's a nut. That's why I don't like. Her. She snubbed me. <laughs> she committed her husband for drinking. How dare her try to get some help for her husband? He he was my friend. She's a gossip. <laughs> this is it's. Silly stuff. It's crazy. My employer, unreasonable, unjust, self-esteem. Self He's overbearing, threatens to fire me for drinking and patting my ex expense account. How dare him? My wife, she misunderstands and nags. She misunderstands that I got a mistress. You know, we ain't getting into that right now, though. She likes Brown. How does he know that? Does he know that? Does she tell him that? I highly doubt it. Likes Mr. Brown. Wants to put a house in her, in her name. Okay. Cool. Let's see what we look like. Yes. We went back through our lives. Right? This is after one, two, and three. This is after the third column. You can even write next to this uh, paragraph so you, you're, you're aware. Um, after third column, you can write. Considered it carefully. You can underline considered it carefully and put after third column. So when I'm done writing columns one, two, and three, we went back through our lives. Nothing you might want to circle, um, highlight, put a star on it. If you got any stickers, um, put a sticker on that. <laughs> Nothing counted but thoroughness and honesty. Nothing counted. When we were finished, we considered it carefully. So when I'm finished, I consider it carefully. I'm looking through one, two, and three columns. I'm looking through one columns one, two, and three. I'm considering it carefully. The first thing apparent was that the world and its people were often quite wrong. <laughs> to conclude that others were wrong was as far as most of us ever got. That has been me, man, my whole life. It's always been somebody else, man. Always been somebody else. You know, and that's as far as I got was like to admit that somebody else is wrong. Check it out. The usual outcome when that's, that's as far as I get was that people continue to wrong us and we stayed sore. Sometimes it was remorse and then we were sore at ourselves for doing something stupid. But the more we fought, the more we fought and tried to have our own way. The more we fought and tried to, to be the actor and have our own way, the worse matters got. Tell me that's not true in your life. It's 100% true in my life. As in war, the victor only, and I underline, seemed to win. Our moments of triumph were short-lived. As in war, the victor only seemed to win. Um, say you, you, you're, you're, uh, you say my daughter, right? Say me and my daughter getting into an argument, right? And it's some political stuff. And she's like, dad, this is what's going on, right? And this is what's happening instead of me respecting it. And I, I do this. No, you're wrong. Right. And then she, she does something, anything, right. That I know is wrong. Even just, even if it's a part of it is wrong. And I manipulate the situation because I'm a freaking lawyer when it comes to combating and, and um, uh, um, defending stuff. <laughs> and I, I'll, make, I'll make something so wrong, right? right? And then I win the argument. I win the argument, right? Just to prove the fact that I'm right, just to say I told you I'm right, right? On some particular matter, yet her and I don't talk. For years. And I'm holding on to this simple, silly, petty, 
argument of being right. And I haven't talked to my daughter in years. I'm just getting, this is just an example. And I haven't spoken to her for years. Did I really win the argument? Is that really uh, equivalent to a, if that's even a word, does that even equate to, to I won the argument, you know, or I won? People went to Iraq, right, and fought wars. Give you another example, maybe this would be good. People go to Iraq and they fought in the, in the Iraq war. A lot of people came home not the same, you know, that, that as when they left, you know. And we can say, you know, America will say, yeah, we won the war in Iraq. Um, what did we win, you know? What, what was won? What did we gain from that, you know? Um, and I'll say this, go talk to the, to the kids and the parents who, uh, the kids' parents that didn't come home, you know? Go talk to their parents um, whose, whose kids never came back from Iraq and, and ask them, uh, do they believe we won the war, you know? And sometimes, like, uh, I just got to put, I got to put it down. So the victor only seen the win. Our moments of triumph were short-lived. It is plain that a life which includes deep resentment leads only to futility and unhappiness, Terrence. To the precise extent that we permit these, do we squander the hours that might have been worthwhile. I can spend days on it. We're talking about tenth step. I'm talking about currently. I can spend days. I ain't talking about your first inventory. We're talking about years of stuff. You'll spend so many through 20 years of this resentment that you had 20 years ago. How many times have you seen a person, heard his name or her name, thought about him, whatever, and literally got lost in hours of thought on what you would do and how the, the whole situation took place and squandered the hours that could have been useful where I could have been thinking of something completely different, being beneficial to somebody, spending time with my family, and then my wife comes to this to say I'm married and I'm squandering the hours all of a sudden, right? And I'm thinking about this resentment from 20 years ago. My wife's like, hey, babe, I'm like, not right now. And I'm angry internally from something that happened 20 years ago. You get what I'm saying? To the precise extent that we permit these, do we squat, permit them? Yeah, man. Mother, you know, do we squander the hours that might have been use, useful and worthwhile? Wasting my life with time, man, focusing on some nonsense. But with the alcoholic whose hope, and this is our hope, and remember, we're in this inventory one, two, three, I'm ready to do four. So my hope 100% is the, uh, is the maintenance, is my hope is the maintenance and growth of a spiritual experience. I want to have the most amazing spiritual experience um, and, and keep it uh, due to maintenance in the 10th, 11th. So th anyway, this business of resentment is infinitely grave. Doesn't sound logical, right? Grave is like a gun to your head or something like that. No, nah, man, we're talking about this internal thing that is killing us. Spiritual or maintenance and growth of a spiritual experience. This business of resentment is infinitely grave. We found that it is fatal. It's going to kill us. It's, it's true. It almost resentment's almost killed me. I don't know how many times. For when harboring such feelings, when I'm harboring such feelings, I am shutting myself off from the sunlight of the spirit, blocking myself from God when I'm harboring such thoughts and feelings and resentments. I'm heart, when, we found that it is fatal for when harboring such feelings, we shut ourselves off from the sunlight of the spirit. The insanity of alcohol returns and we drink again. And with us to drink is to die. This is all proof. This is proven experience. We ain't talking about some stuff that somebody made up. They're talking about we have evidence. They went through this thing. Uh, scores of experiences. You know, they worked with people. All the time. This is scientific evidence for us. And with so uh, with and with us to drink is to die. I underlined all that and also highlighted the squandering the hours part. 
Um, it's plain to see that a life on deep resentment always had been worthwhile, a highlight, and I put next to it, wasting my time with life. Um, if we were to live, we're back down. If we were to live, we had to be. If you have to do something, you got to do it. We had to be free of anger. <laughs> Let it go. I got to be free from, no matter what happened. No matter if you played a part or not, don't matter. In every resentment, in every one of these things, we'll get to this one, I'm, I'll, I'll let this go for, for Saturday, because we ain't there yet. The grouch, we had to be, I have to be free from anger no matter what. The grouch and the brainstorm were not for us. They may be the dubious luxury of normal men, but for the alcoholic, these things are poison. What is me being mad at this person? They ain't, might not even be thinking about me. You know? And I'm spending years, months, weeks on end thinking about some stuff that happened to me 20 years ago. Or however many years ago. Or yesterday. You know? So, um, lying through the, the page right here. Um, a lion separating these two paragraphs. On page 66. The last... Well, the second... I guess the last we turned. So a line between there and these for these things to the alcohol, these things are poison. And when you put when you get done putting that line through there, next to the bottom paragraph on page 66, write beginning of fourth column. Because this is the beginning of the fourth column on page uh, 66. I I so we'll get into the fourth column next week. Or excuse me, Saturday, which is going to be uh, nothing short of interesting, I'd say. Oh, man. Um, so it's an honor, man. I got to speak at a group uh, the other day uh, outside, actually. They're shut. My home group isn't opening um, until May of next year. Uh, the building anyway, so we're like, you already have a business meeting, figure out what's going on like that, but meetings are starting to open up a little bit here, I don't know how it is in Delaware, there are some around, I spoke at an outside group Sunday, it was pretty cool, man, it was just a great experience to like, actually have people with us, you know, um, so, uh, God bless you guys, man, thank you for tuning in, I hope you got something out of it, man, and, and uh, we just continue to do God's work, and uh, I pray for, for uh, our families and please pray for my brother uh, Joseph um, who, who's um, not well, you know. Um, I appreciate it if you could really send some prayers. I mean, honestly, like send, like pray for my brother Joey, you know. I really appreciate it, man. I love you guys and God bless you and have a good night.